बिहारी लाल की प्रथम सदगुरु वंदे श्री कृष्ण तदनंतर गुरु saying to his mind o oh mind keep chanting chin to chin every moment keep chanting the name of radha chanting god's name is very important especially in this age we live in bhagavat mahapurana tells us kriti adhyate vishnu कृतो विष्णु त्रेतायाम यजतो मखै द्वापरे परिचर्यायाम कलौ तद्धरी कीर्तनाथ 
12th canto, the chapter 52nd verse, Srimad Bhagavad Mahapura. The Bhagavad is saying that which is attained in the age of Satyu, the very first age, by meditating on Sri Krishna and God, in the age of Treta Yuk, through Yagna, sacrificial worship to God, to Sri Krishna, in the age of Dwapa, through puja, ritualistic worship to Sri Krishna, is easily attained in the age of Kalyuk, just by chanting the name of the Lord. In fact, we are told in the scriptures, in this age we can do nothing but only chant the name. Kali Yuga Jogana Jagya Jnana Ek Aadhar Ram Gunagana In the age of Kali Yuga, we cannot do yoga, we cannot do jnana, we cannot do dharma. Only one thing left, do bhakti, chant the name of the Lord with love. And why Radhe name? So, first we have to understand that Radha and Krishna are one and the same. Many people don't know who is the entity called Radha. Yayam Radha Yashra Krishna Sabit Dehas Chaika Krinata Tad Dhrida Bhut Atharv Vedra Radhika Tapanyo Parishad The Vedas say there is no question of Radha and Krishna being two. They don't even and have two bodies. One supreme power has taken two forms, Doru, for the sake of Krida. Krida means Leela, divine pastime. So Radha saved Sri Krishna and also God has taken all his power and put in the name. Nam Nam Akari Bahudha Nijasarva Shaktis. There's no difference between God and the name. He's sitting in the name. We also, we've heard this, but we don't benefit because we don't feel and realize that. The more we feel, the more we realize that, the more benefit. So, chant the name every moment of Radha Rani. Brahma Adhika Ki Kaun Baat Jehi Ratata Brahma Ghanisham <clears throat> what do you say of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiv, and other divine entities, even the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, the Supreme Power, he is also chanting the name of Radha. It is said when Sri Krishna would go to sleep, he loved this name Radha so much. When he go to sleep, every pore of his body, the name Radhe, Radhe, Radhe comes. He also chants, even in sleeping. Jehi Rati Maharas Rasapayo Shankar Dhari Tanubam. When Bhagavan Sri Krishna played the Vasudhi, the divine fruit, to signal the start of Maharas, only those souls who were, deserve, who were deserving heard. The gopis, the milkmaids of Vrindavan, they all heard. Their own husband didn't hear. The coward boys didn't hear. Ishoda, Maya, Nanda Baba didn't hear. Only the poor please. Sitting on Mount Kailash, he also heard. He came running. And the gopis met him. And they said, Who are you? Where are you going? He said, I am Shivji. I have heard the Vasudhi, the Sri Krishna is about to begin Maharas. I want to take part. So the gopi said, okay, maybe he is Shivji, but you are Shivji. But only Radha Rani gives permission for taking part in Maharas. Only by her permission, even Sri Krishna gets permission before he can start Maharas on Radha Rani. So please wait here, we will ask Radha Rani. The gopis went to Radha Rani and said, there's a Babaji. With matted hair, ash smear over his body, the ashes of dead body, etc. Snake around his body. And he says he is Shivji 
and he wants to take part in Maharas. Radha Rani is all knowing. She is Sri Krishna himself. She says, yes, he is Bhagwan. She is Swayam Bhagwan. He is deserving. And he also chants Radhi Radhi all the time. And because of that, he is also deserving. But he has to become a gopi. In the Ras, only one man can be present, that is Sri Krishna. Every other soul in Maharas has to be gopi, female. So, this was told to Shivji, and he, because he is also Bhagwan, so I am Bhagwan, he is Sri Krishna himself in another form. He also has Yoga Maya Shakti. Through the power of Yoga Maya, he became Bam. In other words, a gopi. To take part in Maharas, that gopi is known as Shivan. Nigama Gamma Nidhi Rasika Nadini Vinuhi Mol Vinumo Vinudam. This divine ras, divine nectar, the ultimate supreme bliss of the name of Radha, the highest bliss, Madanakya Mahanubha. Which the Vedas, etc., are all attended by the Vedas, that divine rasa is distributed freely to all the souls who come in contact with a rasic saint. A rasic saint, there's a ras and a rasic. So ras means divine nectar, divine bliss. The word ras itself means Sri Krishna. Raso vai sahara sakvam hevayam labdhvanandi bhavati. Taitri Upanishad, chapter 2, verse 7. The Vedas say, Shri Krishna is Ras, bliss, divine nectar. So he is Ras and he is also Rasik. Rasik means the drink of that Ras. He is Rasik Shirom, topmost among Rasik. So Shri Krishna is also Rasik. And all those saints who have attained the divine who have done Radha Muga Bhakti. Radha Muga Bhakti. They become deserving, they become rasik, and they drink the divine nectar of Radha Krishna also. Radha naam, Radhe naam, Pukartha Arat, Bhajat Taji Nijabham, Nijadham. When a sadhak, a deserving soul, cries from the depth of the heart, of his heart, her heart, with longing for Radha Rani and chants the name Radha. Hey, here in that Radha Rani leaves her own divine abode and runs to that soul. Milyo Kripaluhi Ratana Amolak Kaha Jagat So Kaam. So the same Kripaluji saying the words of that devotee, that aspiring soul, that having attained that divine bliss, divine nectar of the divine bliss through the chanting of the name Radhe Radhe and through the grace of Rasik, the saint only attain that bliss then one has no care about anything else in the world because you have attained the supreme highest treasure Chin Chin Radhe Oh, mm -hmm. 
Consciousness to the body, which is called Jeev, soul, Atma. And the soul is a fraction of God, a fraction of Shri Krishna, part. And it's a natural love, that every part, every fraction has a natural love for the whole and wants to become one with it. So since Every soul in the universe is a fraction, part of Shri Krishna. It means we all love and want only Shri Krishna. And who is Shri Krishna? What is Shri Krishna? We saw in the Vedas, Taiti Upanishad, the third chapter, a research was done by a Rishi by the name of Bhrigu. 
to the help of his guru, his own father, Guru Bhimir Guru Baru, he found out that God, Sri Krishna, is happiness, bliss, anand. When we say happiness, sukh, anand, or we say Sri Krishna, God, the two names for one and the same entity. God is happiness, happiness is God. But even though, and we have always been searching for happiness, we, the individual soul, Jivatma, are beginning in this. Just as God, Sri Krishna, is unborn, eternal, beginningless, we, the individual souls, are also unborn, eternal, beginningless. Never had a beginning, will never have an end. We saw from the Gita everywhere. So, from beginningless time, we have been searching for one thing happiness. It's our nature. But we're not finding the tiniest drop of true happiness even once, even in dream. Instead, we've only gotten pain and suffering in this world. The reason for that being, we've forgotten who we are. We've forgotten that we're the soul Atma. Because of ignorance, from beginning to this time, we've identified with the physical body. That's why we've always been searching for happiness in the material world. Uncountable times we have gotten human birth in every form of life. There are 8.4 million forms in every form we have been searching. Uncountable time. And we've not found, found even the tiniest drop because we're looking in the wrong place where it cannot be found, in the material world, the material persons, material objects, etc. So, Sri Krishna is happiness and only by attaining Sri Krishna will attain that happiness. The question comes, how we are going to attain Sri Krishna? We are going to hear a little bit today. Try not to be too long, but it's important to understand. So who can know God? Who can attain God? This is the question. As by only attaining Him, Sri Krishna will attain happiness. As I told you, the definition for happiness, Sukh, Yovai Bhuma Tat Sukham Bhumai Va Sukham Chandogya Upanishad The Veda say that which is infinite, immeasurable, Eternal, beginningless, is called Sukh happiness. Once attained, it is possessed forever. You will never become separate from it again, ever again. You will never experience sorrow ever again. Such a thing we have not experienced. That we attain only by attaining God, Sri Krishna. So how? So the Vedas tell us the highest authority of knowledge, the highest of the Vedas, the Vedas say, Naya Mahatma Prabhatini Labhyuna Medhayana Bhavnara Shute Kato Upanishad, first canto, second chapter, 23 verse. The Ved Mantra say, Naya Mahatma Prabhatini Labhyuna. Pravachan means lecture. By listening to lectures, we will not attain God. If uncountable saints, Mahapurush, were to come and give lectures to us about God, and we try searching for him, we won't find. Name Dhaya. Even if we were to have the intelligence, of uncountable Saraswati and Brihaspati, the authorities of knowledge, and we start searching for God, we will not find Him. Nabahuna Shutem. By hearing again and again, hearing again and again about God, we will not be able to attain Him. In fact, if God Himself were to come here and start lecturing, telling us about Himself, we will not be able to find him. Are you? 
If God were to come here and talk, all you would attain Him. Now, God is pervaded in every pore of our body. I told you last night, God pervades in every particle of the universe. In every pore of our body. He's sitting in our heart. What benefit are we getting? Uh, then you may say, okay, if He comes and stands in front of us, the Shri Ram, Shri Krishna, will surely be lost in bliss. No. Why? Tusilas Ji gives us now, he tells us in the Ramayana. Different thing. 
So everything is divine. <laughs> His body is divine. But to see divine body of Sri Krishna, we have to have divine eyes. Vikata Vikata Jani Adhikari. As I told you yesterday, we have seen God not once, not twice, uncountable time. We, the individual souls, are beginningless. Whenever, whenever God has descended as Sri Ram, Sri Krishna, etc., we were there, we saw. But what did we see? Jaki Ravi Bhavana Jaisi Prabhu Murati Deki Tinataisi. Just as how we are on the inside, we see the same way outwardly. In other words, if we, when we were to when we see God in the same with our material eyes, we see them as a material being just like us, with all the faults, defects and shortcomings, just like us. However we are, we see them the same. That's why we don't benefit. No one benefits when God descends in the world. Afterwards, when he leaves, some saint writes his autobiography and calls it Ramayana, Bhagavat, etc. And then we hear this and we listen, read, and then we fall in love with him and we take him. Otherwise, but when he is here, nobody benefits. Sri Krishna says to Arjun in the Gita, Avajaranti Mamurha Manushim Tanumashutam. Param Bhavam Ajananto Mama Bhuta Maheshwaram Chapter 9 verse 11 Gita Arjun, unaware of my divine nature that I am God, divine Ignorant human beings, all of us Ignorant human beings under the control of Maya Mistake him for an ordinary human being Worse than us sometimes Instead of benefit, we get harm we commit Nam Aparad, unpardonable sin. This is why the Vedas are saying, Naya Mahatma Pavachanina Labhyuna Medhayana Bahuna Shutayana. Kato Upanishad, 1st Kanto, 2nd chapter, 20 verse. And if we think we can know God through the performance of Vedic rites and rituals, study of the Vedas, the scriptures, fasting, charity, etc. And Sri Krishna says in Gita, Naham Vedaina Tapasa Natane Na Chet Jaya. Chapter 11, verse 53, Gita. Sri Krishna says, No amount of study of the Vedas, divine scriptures, austerities, fasting, rites and rituals, etc. can help anyone to attain. Okay, so now we know how we cannot know God. Let's find out how we can know Him. So in the same Kato Upanishad Ved, I told you the Vedas are the highest authority and the most important section of Vedas are called Upanishad. So in Kato Upanishad, the first line of that Mantra, that verse I told you, first canto, second chapter, twenty-third verse, tells us how we cannot know God. The first line, the second line, the same verse says, "Yame vaisya vinute tena labhyas tasyaisha atma vinute tanu gamsva." Kato Upanishad, first canto, second chapter, twenty-third verse. The Vedas then go on to say. God can be seen, known, and attained only, only by those upon whom He showers His grace, His kripa, His prasad. Tat prasadat, taparubhavat deva prasadat cha, Shrita Shvatar Upanishad chapter 6 verse 21. Only the one who attains His grace, His kripa, His prasad. Brahma, the creator, the one who creates this entire universe, uncountable solar systems. He is saying to Sri Krishna, in glorifying Sri Krishna after he tried to test, he tried to test Sri Krishna to see if he was God. 
stealing the cows and the cows, etc. Then afterwards, Leela, he realized by Sri Krishna's grace that he is the Supreme Lord. He started glorifying. He says in one of the verse, Atha pite deva pada bujatvaya prasad lesha nugrita evahi janati tattvam bhagavan mahitno na chade eko pichiram vichitman Shrimad Bhagavad Mahapuran 10th Kanto 14th chapter 29th verse. Brahma is saying, only by the grace, only one who is blessed with the grace of Sri Krishna can attain him, know him, see him. Otherwise, one may spend uncountable lifetimes reading all the scriptures, listening to them, and meditating on the meaning, but they will get nothing if they don't have the grace. In the Gita, many of you have heard Gita, read the Gita. Read the whole Gita few times. At the end of the Gita, when Arjuna had attained true knowledge, how did he attain that knowledge? Many of you would think after hearing the 18 chapters, the lectures of the 18 chapters of the Gita, 18 chapters of the Gita, he attained knowledge. But do you know what is written in Gita? Arjuna says to Sri Krishna, Chapter 18, verse 73. Nashto moha. My Lord, my ignorance has been destroyed. Oh, very good. Smitilabdha, and I have attained true knowledge. Very good, Arjun. Now I want you to tell the whole world. So that in the future, no one will be deceived. How was your ignorance destroyed and how did you attain true knowledge? Arjun said, Tvat Prasadhan Maya Chutna. Chapter 18, verse 73. Gita. Arjun says, My Lord, it was by your grace, Prashad, your grace alone. Tvat Prasadhan Maya Chutna. By your grace alone. My ignorance was destroyed and attained true knowledge. Not your lectures. Your grace and prepared prasad. These lectures in the Gita, this Gita is not only here in this age we live in, not comfortable times. These, are, these scriptures in Sanatana Dharma, they have existed from beginningless time. Eternal. Uncountable times we have Heard Gita, read Gita. Nothing has happened. People read words. Hey, what are you reading? Gita. You know, what? Sarva dharma parityajya mame kam sharanam braj. Chapter 18, verse 66. But this is what Sri Krishna is saying to Arjun, that Arjun renounce all dharma, all obligations and take shelter in me alone. Why are you saying Ma me kam sharanam bridge? Who are you telling to take shelter in you? Are you have to take shelter in Sri Krishna? Why are you saying Ma me kam sharanam bridge? <laughs> this little knowledge sometimes is very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Because instead of gaining, we end up losing. How? Okay. Look at a person who has never read Gita, Rama and Bhagavad. When he will go to the mandir or he will pray to Bhagwan, he may not know any prayer. He is illiterate. But he goes before God and says, Oh Lord, I know nothing. I am nothing. I take shelter in you. You alone are my enemy. Tears come to the eyes. Tears will come. Because the feeling is, I know nothing. But the person who gets a little knowledge from reading here, Gita, Bhagavad, Ramayana, Ved, 
etc. That Gyan Abhiman comes. I know everything. <laughs> There's a pride called Gyan Abhiman, the pride of learning. There's a saying in English a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. We think we know everything. We read some book and now we start giving lectures. We become Swami, we become Guru. <laughs> and we don't even know anything. Anybody can read book and give lecture. Doesn't mean you know. So that pride comes. The pride that I know everything. Very difficult for such a person to surrender to God or to surrender to a true saint, the true Guru. Anyhow, so only by God's grace, when He will shower His grace, His Kripa, His Prashad, we'll be able to know Him, attain Him. The Ramayana to it says, To truly know what's written in the mind, you have to become Tulsidas. To truly know what's written in Gita, you have to become Arjun. Vita Vyas, what's written in Bhagavad. These are divine words. To understand divine words, you have to have a divine mind, divine intellect. We'll understand according to our intellect. Doesn't mean you know. Material mind and intellect cannot understand divine words. Only by your grace, by the great God show his grace, we can attain and know him. Again, Tusaraji says very beautifully in the Ramayana.
is the power that belongs to God. It is His power. Mainam to Maheshwara, it belongs to God, His power. In Gita also, Sri Krishna says, Daivi Hesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratya Mami Vai Prapadyante Maya Meta Antarantite. Chapter 7, verse 14, Gita Daivi Hesha. Sri Krishna says, Maya is a divine power. You non dualists Advaita philosophers, Maya is a divine power, and he says, Mama Maya, Mary Maya. Maya is a power that belongs to Sri Krishna. It is his power. Many places. Everywhere you say, Maya is the power of God. It is his power. Nata Jeeva Tava Maya Moha So Nistarai Tumari Hi Choha Mudha Bhed Yadya Pikrit Maya Binu Hari Jaya Na Koti Upaya Again, the Ramayana say Maya is a power that belongs to God. It is His power. Jeeva Tava Maya not Tau Maya, your Maya. And try as you might, you can try thousands of things. Maya is not going to let go of us just saying it's an illusion, it doesn't exist. But as I said, the non dualists the Advaita philosophers, they do not accept there's such a thing called Maya. They said, we don't believe, we don't believe in two Siddhasthi's philosophy, Maya is a Dasi, made servant of God. We don't listen to that. Ah, if you start talking about Shankaracharya, his philosophy, we listen. Shankaracharya likens Maya to a piece of rope that is mistaken for a snake in the dark. Somebody's walking in the dark, there's a piece of rope that is coiled, and they say, ooh, snake. They become confused. Uh, it's all right. But where did he get the rope from? There are three things that make up this world. Three entities. Brahm, Jeev, Maya. God, the individual soul, Maya. Shankaracharya accepts only one entity, God. Because as far as he is concerned, Maya doesn't exist. It's an imagination of the mind. And the Jivatma, the individual soul, is also God. Aham Brahma I am God. He says, just as an oyster shell, a seashell, is mistaken for silver in the dark, and the flying sand in the mid the sun of the desert is mistaken for water by the deer, that mirage, in the same way, we have become confused and formed the illusion of this world. This doesn't exist. You don't exist. I, you are imagining me right now. I am imagining you. All this is our imagination. This is what he said. To Siddharth, he came after and he said, Why, what is this? Anyhow, Shankaracharya was Mahapurush saint. So I'm not going to argue with him, but I have something to say. Pusidasi said. Rajat the Sea Pamahubhas 
In time, the illusion of the flying sand in the midst of the desert, that mirage that it is water will be destroyed, will recognize there is no water. It's only a mirage. But no, not even Jagat Guru Shankaracharya. If Maya is a Brahm, an illusion, as he said, I would argue, Maya. If it is, even if it is an illusion, even Shankaracharya cannot destroy that illusion by self-effort. How can it be destroyed? Jasu Kripa Asa Brahma Vitti Jai Giri Jasu Kripa Nura Gurai Again Kripa, grace. If, as Shankaracharya said, Maya is a Brahma, an illusion, imagination of the mind, <laughs> even then that illusion cannot be destroyed without Ram Kripa, without God's grace. Okay, let's leave all of that. There's another way. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. The Vedas tell us, Parikshalokan karma chitan brahmano nilveda maya nastakutakadena Mundakopanishad first, Mundak second, Kand, 12th mantra. The Vedas say, if we are so fortunate to meet the true Guru, Shotriya Brahmanisht Mahapurusha, Shotriya means one who has knowledge of all the scriptures, all the Vedas, all the Puranas, Bhagavat, Ramayana, Mahabharata, all the scriptures, complete knowledge. Plus, he is able to remove our doubts. Shotriya. If he is Shotriya, but even more important, he is Brahmanishtha, meaning. He has attained practical experience of God. He has seen Sri Krishna. He has attained the divine knowledge, divine bliss, divine vision of Sri Krishna. If we are so fortunate to meet such an individual, take shelter in such an individual, the true Guru, there is no need for God's grace. Jaya hi bhati banai sayoga if by coincidence, does not happen by coincidence. Without God, anyhow. But if by coincidence, suppose we meet such an individual, take shelter in him. We don't need God's grace. The Vedas also says, Acharyavan Purusho Hived. Only through the grace of a true saint, the true Guru, one can know God. This is also said in Bhagavad Mahapuram. Tasma Guru Papadde, the Jibyasu Shreya Uttamam, Shade Parichit Nishnatha Brahman Upashamashayam. 11 Kanto, 3rd chapter, 21st verse. The exact translation of the Ved Mantra I just told you. If you're so fortunate to meet the true Guru, qualify. Shade Parichit Nishnatha, this complete knowledge of all the Vedas, all the scriptures. But even more important, Brahman Brahman Upasamashayam. He has attained that divine knowledge, divine bliss, divine vision of God. He has attained God. Then there is no need for God's grace. Sri Krishna also says in Gita, Tad vira pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadechari tegyanam gyaninas tattva darshina. Chapter 4, verse 34, Gita. If we are so fortunate, same thing is being said here. Jnaninaha 
प्लस तत्वदर्शिन दिस इज व्हाट क्वालिफाइज वन टू बी गुरु दिस ओनली थिंग दैट क्वालिफाइज ज्ञान इन हिज नॉलेज ऑफ ऑल द स्क्रिप्चर्स कंप्लीट नॉलेज ही इज एबल टू रिमूव आवर डाउट्स बट इवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट ब्रह्म तत्वदर्शिन he is seen krishna then the divine vision if we meet such a person the real guru we surrender to him completely attain divine knowledge from him and serve him to his seva he will give us divine knowledge he will give us god rama in everywhere to that he says the rama in गुरु बिनु भाव निधि तारई न कोई जाओ बिरंची शंकर सम होई वन विल बी एस पावरफुल एस शिव द डिस्ट्रॉयर शिव भगवान एस ब्रह्मा द क्रिएटर बट ही विल नॉट बी एबल टू क्रॉस द ओशन ऑफ माया विदाउट गुरु गुरु इज वेरी इंपोर्टेंट बात A big bot comes here. Bino sat sang viveka na hoi. Ram kripa bino sula bhana soi. You're not going to be the true saint, the true guru, just like that. Ram kripa bino sula bhana soi. Without God's grace, no one. So he also Ram Kripa, Krishna Kripa, God's grace. Then we'll meet the Guru. Otherwise, impossible. What instrument do we have for knowing who is a Guru? Huh? We may think he who does not have greed, greed, anger, jealousy, hatred, etc., is a Guru, a saint. But the saints are very good actors. They're very, very good actors. They hide themselves. they will test us in the highest way we fail because we go to judge we can't see on the inside so we judge outwardly to siraj he says lakhi suvesh jag vanchak jeu vesh pratap pooji ahiteu because we can't see on the inside we not antaryami we look outwardly what kind of clothes someone wears yellow clothes orange clothes white clothes pink clothes or something we look out how many mala how kind of mark on the forehead how they behave how they speak how what they eat we look outwardly we judge externally this is why instead of saying we end up worshiping impostors dambhi we make them guru but they don't know the benefit so unless god shows his grace it's not easy to meet a true saint let's suppose you go to a, 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 a true guru someone told you there's a guru in india In a village called Mangar, Bhakti Dhar. Oh, I want to see. Decide to go. You go all the way to Bhakti Dhar. You meet this guru. His name is Maharaji. And you say he asks you where. And you say Pranam, Radhe Radhe. He says Radhe Radhe. Who are you? I am Ramesh. Acha. Where you come from? I have come from. Florida, America. That's right. Why have you come to have your darshan, your blessing, Maharaj? That's right. Do you have land? Do you have uh, money in the bank, etc.? Yes, yes, Maharaj. I have land. I have money in the bank. I have all that. Okay, I want you to do something. I want you to sign over. All your material possessions, your land, your house, everything, bank balance, everything, in the name of my ashram. Who? 
What kind of guru is this? Immediately we're going to give judgment. <laughs> what we can't understand our own wife, our own husband, our own children. <laughs> to the point we can't even understand our own mind. We're slave to our mind. We know something is not good. It's going to kill us, but the mind. Oh, I can't drink the tea, the coffee without sugar. We're slave to the mind. We know so, some things are not good. The saint tells us don't deep fry. Eat the steamed vegetable, it's healthy. Eat healthy. If you want to be healthy, I can't go out. You deep fry and destroy everything. One day you go to the, the doctor and the doctor says, Hey, you have diabetes. Oh. Now no more fry food. Steam vegetable only. Boil. <laughs> yes, doctor. <laughs> Now we will, we will listen to doctor, we don't, but when Guru told us, so this is a condition of our mind, we are slave. So how can we ever understand the true saint, the true Guru? So only when God will shower his grace. Shri Rama showered his grace upon me. I am able to meet the saint. I am able to meet you, Hanuman. Otherwise, impossible. Impossible. Santa Vishuddha Milahi Punitehi. When we're going to meet the pure saint, the true Guru, Rama Kripa Karichitta Vahijeni, when the Lord will turn the key from inside, then quick march. <laughs> Otherwise, you will hear everybody going, Yeah, I want to go to. I think I, I should. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> From inside, somebody turns the key and then it happens. Otherwise, it's very difficult. A lot of things we just make more important in the world. Anyhow, so we all want only happiness. Every action could be a fraction of happiness. God. 
Someone nature to want only happiness and only by attaining Sri Krishna will attain that happiness. And how will attain Sri Krishna? Only when he showers his grace, his kripa. And how will he get the grace of Sri Krishna? We'll hear the next time. Bole Vindavan Bihari Lal Ki Jai Radha Rani Ki Jai Srimad Sadguru Sarkar Ki Jai We do a chant. Same book. Last page. <clears throat> Beautiful chant. Barasane Vari Radhe, Bhuri Bhari Pyari Radhe. I told you. In the beginning about Radha Rani, that she's not a form of Sri Krishna. Radhika Krishna Rupam Jo Krishna Radha Swarupaka. Sana Kumar Sangita. The scripture says Radha Rani is the form of Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna is the form of Radha Rani. They are one the same. But the form of Radha Rani is more. Compassionate, more merciful. Mother's heart melts. She's very soft. She Krishna is kathor. It's very hard. Difficult. Radha Rani heart melts very easily. Very, very easily. And the six saints, they know that Radha and Krishna are one and the same, but they prefer Radha Rani. Heart melts very easily. Ma. So Radha Rani, she is Bhuri Bhari, very, very soft, very simple, very soft-hearted, innocent-hearted. She is Barsane Vari, she resides in the place called Barsane. Sukumari Pyari Radhe, Radha Rani is Sukumari, she is a princess, she is very gentle, very soft. And Vari Vari, I sacrifice myself again and again on the most beautiful Radha Rani. Natavari Pyari Radhe, Radha Rani. So the thing that differentiates Sri Krishna from all forms of the same God, he has more mukut, the peacock feather. What differentiates Radha Rani, she has enough. Natavari, she's called Natavari. There's a, 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 um, an ornament. It's a, good, a chain with a ring and the nose, it's raw. It's on this side here. It goes to the air and then it joins to her nose. It's called a nut. So she's called Natavari. Pyari Rade. And again, she's, that makes us look even more beautiful. Pyari Pyari Rade. Balihari Pyari. Balihari. I sacrificed myself on Radha Rani. Who is more precious, more loving than even Sri Krishna? Pyare to Pyari Radhe, Prano te Pyari Radhe. So Radha Rani, she is more precious than even Sham Sundar, that she is beloved by even Sham Sundar himself, Sri Krishna himself. Banwari Vari Radhe, Brajnari Vari Radhe, Sri Krishna Sak, Banwari means Sri Krishna. He sacrifices himself for Radha Rani. The Brajanari, the gopis, they sacrifice himself for Radha Rani. Atihi Kripalu Radhe. Manane Basale Radhe. Radha Rani is extremely merciful. As I said, she's so easy, she's so soft, so easy to please. Bhori Bhari. So she's extremely merciful, extremely soft. Take Radha Rani, place her in your heart. Attain her grace, her kripa. Through her, with her blessing, will attain Sri Krishna. So let's sing the praises of that form of Sri Krishna Radha Rani. Barsa Nivarira. 
बुरी भारी प्यारी राधे